Hello, Roger PC Jack. Today, we're going to be taking a close look at the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite DDR form of a board. We'll take a quick look at what comes in the box and also go over all the specs and features of this mobile board and everything else you need to know. So, with all that out the way, let's get into the unboxing. Opening the box, we're first greeted by the mobile board itself. We'll take a close look at that in just a second. There's an included Gigabyte sticker. We've got an installation guide along with our very useful motherboard manual, which I would highly recommend referring to during your build. We've got a few M.2 screws. We've got two SATA data cables, so you can use these in order to connect your 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives. Lastly, we also get an adapter for your front panel header, which allows you to pre-install your case's front panel connectors and slot them in all at once on your motherboard. So that's everything that comes in the box. Now let's take a closer look at the motherboard itself. So here we have the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite. It's an ATX form factor and uses the LGA1700 socket, which as you can see here is a little larger compared to the previous generation's LGA1200 socket with these additional 500 pins, which is the reason why you can see such an increase in socket and processor size. To be precise, this socket is actually 7.5mm longer than an LGA1200 socket. LGA1700 supports Intel 12th gen CPUs, but additionally 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, provided that you are using the up-to-date BIOS. I have a lot of BIOS update tutorials on the channel, but I will also be publishing a tutorial specifically for this motherboard, so make sure you're subscribed for when that goes live. In regards to our PCB, this motherboard has a 6 layer and 2x copper design. For our power delivery, we have a 16 plus 1 plus 2 direct digital VRM design and a 70 amp power stage. This should be more than sufficient for most 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs. Moving on, here we have our DDR4 DIMM slots, and in case you weren't sure, you cannot use DDR4 and DDR5 interchangeably on this exact motherboard, despite 12th and 13th gen supporting DDR5. If you have DDR5 memory, you will need to use the DDR5 version of this board. But either way, there are 4 DIMM slots in total. By JDAC standards, this motherboard supports up to 3200 speed DDR4, but you can potentially run up to 5333 speed, but this is not guaranteed and will vary greatly depending on your CPU. Next up, we have free PCIe slots, so you have plenty of bandwidth for PCIe devices such as your GPU, capture cards, and more. One slot of which is a reinforced PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot. With the huge amount of PCIe bandwidth available to this board, we've got four M.2 slots available. One connects directly to your CPU, and the other three connect to your chipset. All of these M.2 sockets are then covered by two heatsinks, which can be a little annoying to remove just to install one drive, but this is still useful in maintaining firmals while putting your drives under sustained read and writes for a lengthy amount of time. For more traditional storage though, you've got up to 6 SATA 6 gigabit ports for connecting your SATA drives, so this would be for your 2.5 inch SSDs or 3.5 inch mechanical drives. Moving on, let's take a look at our headers. Starting at the bottom left, we have our front panel audio header, our ARGB and RGB headers, a TPM header, two USB 2.0 headers, and a Q Flash Plus button. This button is extremely useful for updating the motherboard's BIOS without a compatible CPU installed. Next up, we have our system fan headers, and then our front panel header, which you can use to connect your power, reset, power LEDs, and hard drive activity LED connectors from your case. We also have a reset switch button next to our clear CMOS header. We have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 header, right next to our USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, so you can use these to connect your front panel USB ports from your case. Next to these, we have our hefty ATX24 pin power, at the top of the motherboard, we have more ARGB and RGB headers, in addition to two more fan headers at the top for a CPU cooler. Finally, we have an 8-pin as well as a 4-pin EPS power for our CPU. The additional 4-pin can be useful for overclocking, but for most users, simply using one 8-pin EPS connector will be sufficient. We also have one of my favourite motherboard features, which are easy debug post LEDs, to help identify any issues with your motherboard posting. That's pretty much it for the motherboard itself, but we can also take a look at the rear I.O. available. For display outs, we have DisplayPort and HDMI outputs. We have four USB 2.0 ports, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 USB-C port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, and three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. We also have 2.5 gigabit LAN. Lastly, for audio, we've got line in and line outs, as well as an optical out. So, that's it for the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Elite DDR4 motherboard. Let me know what you think of this motherboard down in the comments below, as I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm very much looking forward to getting even more hands-on with this motherboard and sharing all my thoughts on it, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while helping to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.